Welcome back to another day our survival one life challenge. This is Cambo Commando. Welcome back, guys. Today, today, I want to make some IR-190 for some negative radiation reduction and obviously obviously detoxifying potion energizing potion energizing potion and uh maybe some healing salves because where i'm at it's really good to search for some herbs so for that also also i got some cabbage roll which provides me the herbalist of 50 percent getting more herbs oh hell yeah with my perks obviously you guys know this the perk Herbalist. And, uh, oh man, we're gonna stack up real good. Real, real, real good. All right, now, let's select our perks, right? Most of you guys actually selected Headhunter. That's right, Headhunter, because we're gonna be battling some enemies and they're gonna be hard. So we're gonna do that. I agree. It's a, it's a difficult choice, but you know what, Headhunter? One. There we go, and we got one more new available perk. Lasting effects, strong immune system, saving on armor cause, pistol expert, or crossbow expert. Comment below of which one I should choose. All right, boys, so uh, we are gonna definitely <laughs> search for some of these herbs. So I'll see you guys in a bit two hours later all right boys we finished it it's been a while but we got it and i'm gonna surprise you so we're gonna go do this together so let's see here which one should i make first you know what let's start from the bottom to the top how about that <laughs> let's make the ir one 90 and let's see how many we can make we can make 53 Hell yeah 53 hopefully I have enough chemistry set to make it let's Since the size these bad boys and booyah We just leveled up another level and oh boy. We just had a fallout rain. Oh luckily I am inside my base 53 baby boys get this done Ooh, all right all right all right 53 next let's uh let's see let's see what else can i make can i make leader side no i didn't uh go to the irradiate swamp so i couldn't get that it's okay it's okay let's make detoxifying potion this is what i need when I travel to Moscow. So let's do that. We can make 43. Hell yeah. 43 bad boys. Here we go. 43 detoxifying potion done. Let's check them out, boys. Oh, what a beauty. She's a beauty. 43. <laughs> I am never gonna have problems with my radiation now. Let's see the energizing potion. Energizing potion. 117. Oh, I am never going to sleep. <laughs> 117. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Look at our level experience. It's going up and up and up. And by God, just by making a few medicine we are gaining so much level and 117 energizing potion my god Ooh. now you know what you know what let's make some antibiotics might as well since we have extra items here so uh let's get it on we can make 26 oh we need more sugar we could have gotten more no matter let's synthesize some uh, some more medicine all righty then we got 26 antibiotics 
So now, let's see if we're out. Oh, healing salves. Oh, let's make 10 healing salves. There we go. Healing salves. Done. You know what? Since I leveled up, let's make a few of the tan leather. So let's open up and make 10 tan leather. There we go. Now, I think I'm good. I think I'm ready to go to Moscow, investigate the city, and continue on our quest. So I'll see you guys in a bit. A few moments later. Alrighty then. We have arrived at the heart of Mother Russia, Moscow. All right, we are in the safe haven. So let's uh, let's just drop some. No, we we don't want to drop items, do we? Yeah, let's just drop a few items. For sure, set up our camp. Drop this. We don't need to use that right now. All right. I think we're good. So let's continue on our quest and enter Moscow. All right, let's uh, searching for truth. All right, let's see here. Will the story be the same or will it be different? We're gonna find out right about now. We are in the university, Institute of Virology. So uh, let's search that start the quest oh the institute of virology quest that's right the building had been hardly damaged at all in the nuclear attack some of the window frames even had glass left in them the lobby gave no indication of the catastrophe that had happened outside apart from the thick layer of dust that lay over the old couches the coat racks in the coat room and the reception desk but something was niggling at me niggling in the dim light, I saw two sets of boot prints going toward the stairwell, and there were some animal tracks as well, similar to the wolf tracks, but too big to belong to a wolf. All right, let's go upstairs. I started going up the stairs. The large iron door on the second floor was shut, judging by the dust in front of the door and on the handle. It hadn't been opened in many years. The tracks continue on up to the third floor, a muffled sound filtered down from somewhere above me, like a chair being knocked over. I think somebody up there. Let's go up to the third floor. The door to the third floor was wide open. Beyond it, I saw a small vestibule with three iron doors. Two of the doors had padlocks, but the third was slightly ajar. There was a broken padlock lying on the floor next to it. The sign next to the door reads, Department of Molecular Virology. I walked closer and heard a low, drawn out sound like a moan. The corridor beyond the door was dark, but a little light was shining in it from the window behind me. And then I saw something half a meter in front of me. Turn on the flashlight and go into the corridor. Draw your weapon. Turn on the flashlight and go. Let's draw my weapon. Trying to move silently, I stepped into the dark corridor. The beam of my flashlight slid along the rough whitewash wall and landed on a sign on the nearest door. State collection of viruses. Full of caution, I crept further along the corridor. The sign on the next door read, Chemotherapy Laboratory. The trail of blood from the puddle led here, but I couldn't hear anything behind the door. I went on, yet, another door but this one didn't have a sign however there was a sign on the last door that read virus structure laboratory there was some kind of noise coming from behind this door the noise was muffled but it sounded like a growl let's see here which one should i go boys hmm you know what let's go to number one we'll, we'll, we'll go one by one how about go into the state collection of viruses I entered the small workroom and saw a solid steel door with a warning symbol and a sign that read, Protective clothing must be worn beyond this point. I shone the flashlight through the little window and caught sight of the edge of a table. There was a rack of test tubes on the table. One more test tube lay on the table next to the rack in a dried, muddy yellow puddle. Going in there without hazmat suit would be really, really stupid. 
Alright, let's go back to the corridor. Let's see, let's go number... Two? I cracked open the door cautiously and peeked inside. A few paces away from me, slumped back against a desk, was a man. His head lolled to the side and his eyes were closed, but his lips were trembling faintly. He seemed to be unconscious. I looked at his legs and was hit by a wave of nausea. One foot was missing and blood was streaming from the gruesome stump, pooling on the floor around him. On the other leg, there was a huge wound in his thigh, like a piece of the flesh had been ripped off. All right, let's approach him and try to wake him up. I didn't have any smelling salts on me, so I splashed some good old water in his face. His eyelid fluttered and the guy cracked open his bloodshot eyes. He wasn't looking at me. He was staring off into space. I didn't know if the injured guy was seeing something. He was dying. He, he left. I could. Alex. It was hurt by bullets. The wolf leg. Why we came. Oh. So much blood. He shuddered a final time and was still. I closed his eyes and considered his works. The wolf that wasn't hurt by bullets, it must be somewhere nearby. But what should I do? Let's search the dead body. I would through the dead man's jacket pockets and pulled out a Makarov handgun with an empty magazine, a pack of analgen, cigarettes, rust, and matches. If the man had any other possessions, they weren't in sight. Okay. The room was pretty well preserved. On the tables, there were empty test tubes, measuring beakers, spirit lamps, and two microscopes. A hefty centrifuge lurked in the corner in a glass-fronted cabinet. I saw neat rows of bulbous flasks containing chemical agents of various colors. I combed the room for any records or notes. I found a few newspaper clippings and a memo written by the lab technician, but there was nothing useful in them. All right, let's examine the cabinets of chemicals. My attention was immediately drawn to a large flask labeled urea hydrogen peroxide. I recalled the wolf that had no fear of bullets. What if I weakened it with smoke first? I put on rubber gloves and poured all the anogen I'd found in the dead man's pockets into a beaker. I crushed it with a pestle and sprinkled it on top of the urea hydrogen peroxide. Then I made cones out of newspapers and packed them with the mixture. The smoke bombs are ready. Ooh, let's do it, boys. Let's go with unmarked room. Through the door, there was a huge empty room. It looked like somebody had carried everything they could out of the place. All that was left was a hefty cabinet with open glass doors. Clearly, it was too large and heavy to move. The floor was littered with pieces of glass and tiles that had fallen off the walls. An extraction hood protruded from the ceiling. I discovered that the windows were shut tight and also sealed from the inside. There's nothing else noteworthy here. All right, nothing in there. Let's go. Number four, the virus structure lab. There we go. I went up to the door and heard a low threatening snarl. Whatever was in the room, it had heard my footsteps or smelled me. The door opened into the room. I gave it a quiet nudge and peered through the opening. Inside was a small workroom. I saw another door and a black beast stood in front of it. The creature looked like a wolf, except that it was twice the size of any normal specimen. My flashlight revealed a dirty, coal black coat. The creature turned its horrible, bloodied muzzle towards me and sniffed the air deeply. It must use smell and sand to orient itself. It had large yellow blisters where its eyes should be. The wolf jumped right at me. The door withstood the impact of its massive body, but I was sent flying against the corridor wall. My first reaction was to grab my gun, but then I lowered it, reconsidering, reconsidering, going into this fight unprepared would be suicide. That's, I remember doing number three, right? We were supposed to crack open the door Throw a smoke bomb in so that the wolf won't be able to smell us. So let's do that. Number three, I lit the paper wrapper 
lob both smoke bombs into the workroom and press my back against the door. They must have been smoking well because the wolf seemed to be getting angry. It threw itself at the door again and again. The joints of the door shook with every impact. I pray to God that the wood and lock would hold. Alas, the wolf stopped trying to get out into the corridor. It seemed it was trying to get into the inner room of the lab. I can't waste any time. Let's open the door. The whole room was filled with smoke. The wolf was standing by the second door, shaking its head. The smoke had disoriented it. It couldn't see me. It didn't have eyes. Let's battle. Let's see here. Let's do... Let's do that. Let's, let's do that. 180! Oh, dear lord. All right. Um... Let's pull back a little. Let's blind him, obviously. He doesn't have any eyes, so obviously he doesn't af get affected. He moves kind of slow, and his picture is a little bit different. It says Black Wolf. All right, Black Wolfie. Let's poison you. All right. Wait, my turn. Okay, it's moving slowly. You know what? This is... Easy, let's poke him. There we go. And then once he gets closer, I should be able to shoot him. You know what? Let's poke him again. And then... Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. We got him, boys. It's all over. The final wound proved fatal. With a surprisingly piercing yelp, the wolf fell to the floor and began writhing in horrible convulsions. It didn't want to die. The spasm stopped after a few minutes. The enormous jaws opened for the last time, and his yellow tongue rolled out onto the floor. Let's go to the inner room. Check it out. The interior door was all scratched up by the wolf's claw and teeth. I turned the handle and pushed, but the door didn't budge. I pushed with all my strength, but still, it didn't move. Was it locked? No. Something wasn't right. The wolf wouldn't guard it like that. I listened. Not a sound. Shout, open up, everything's okay. About a minute later, I heard a sharp scraping sound behind the door. Someone was pushing away something heavy. Alas, the handle began to turn. I took a step back. A short and stocky young guy appeared before me. He barely reached my shoulder. But his look of pure joy transformed into one of the horror when he saw the gun barrel pointed straight at his face. In a quiet voice, he stuttered the word, Oh, oh, I, I thought it was Vadim. Who, who are you? Who am I? Just an avid drifter. Who might you be? <laughs> uh, I'm Alex, said the kid, grinning broadly. My, my buddy me lived not far from here. Near Mastishi. Ever been? No? Sometime we make trips into the city, do a quick run through the grocery stores, and then straight back home. No, don't go thinking we're bandits or something. We, we've never laid a finger on anybody. I used to be a chef, and but didn't work as a senior engineer. We don't even know how to shoot. We're completely harmless. Yeah, right. Let's keep listening. Our luck ran out this time. The beast was tracking us. We decided to hide in the institute and uh, it came after us. Vadim fell behind and I got stuck here in this room. Jumping out the window was my last resort. Thank you for saving me. <laughs> You're a good guy. I'll never forget it. He reached out to hug me, but uh, took a very step back. Don't be afraid. We we don't even have any weapons. Hey, you, you didn't sense Vadim around. Did you? Did he survive? Hmm. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's lie. Let's do number two. Yes, he survived. He's alive and well. I saw him. He made it? That's great. Alex looked over me appraisingly. He, he's probably sitting at home worrying about me, so I, I better go. I can't even see the hole now. So thanks again, man. Maybe I'll see you around. He turned around and walked toward the backpack hanging on the back of the chair. He lifted it up and came back towards me. 
I was still standing in the doorway, blocking the patch. He nodded toward the door, asking me to let him pass. Um, let's... I don't want to lower my weapons, because last time I remember what happened. So let's do number two. Sorry, pal. But you can't be walking out like that. Meh. And there I was thinking that you were one of the good guys. Alex sniffled. I thought you were this noble dude going around saving people, but uh, I see now you're planning to rob me. Well, screw you. He reached into the rucksack and pulled out a food can. I, I don't have anything of value. He pulled out another can. I only have food for a couple of days. He sat a bag of pasta next to the can. So, are you going to take it? Take it! A bag of buckwheat grain appeared after the pasta. I'll die of starvation. I hope that weighs on your conscience. I hope you suffer over it. He bought some canned meat. But if you want, I can take away your suffering. And this time, instead of more provisions from the depths of his rack sack, Alex pulled out a gun. I knew it. Let's do this. Uh, let's get my wolf involved in this. Uh, let's do a little poison. Pokey pokey. Let's go behind here. All right. Bite him, boy. Let's see here. He seems a little bit tougher than before. All right. Let's use that. And... Bite him, boy. There we go. He is... Dead. The man gasped in his last. I dragged the body into the corner. Then I started looking around the place where the man had hidden from the wolf. The only furniture in the room was a cabinet, a desk, and a chair. And the room was scarcely bigger than the workroom where I fought the wolf. There were two more doors, both shut with heavy padlocks. The desk drawer contained nothing interesting. But then, in the cabinet, I discovered an almost brand new hazmat suit hanging in a slip cover. I sewed it in my backpack. We got another hazmat suit, boy. Good job, good job. All right, let's go back to the state collection of viruses. Let's put on a hazmat suit. The room was very long, and the far wall was swallowed by darkness. The collection of viruses was laid out across the three tables in test tubes secured in racks. Certain test tubes were empty. As I panned my flashlight across the rest, I saw that they contained cloudy yellow, pink, or pale green liquid. There were, there was broken glass and dried puddles on the floor and tables, and patches of gray, brown mold appeared in patches on the wooden tabletop. I couldn't smell anything from the inside the hazmat suit. Of course, but I would bet that the place had a fair stench about it. Let's carefully search the room. The smashed test tubes indicated that the building had been shaken during the nuclear attack, but not violently enough to overturn the chairs. There were microscopes on a bench running along the far wall. A chunk of plaster was sticking out from under the table. It probably fell off during the bombing. I bent down and saw a hole in the wall. There was something inside. All right, let's reach the hole and pull something out. Letter to Tula. Dear Nadeshna, when you read this message, I beg you, do as I say. I don't want to frighten you, but things are bad. Nesterov didn't come to the lab today. The rest is illegible. The ink is blurred. The recipient address is on the envelope. Envy Kulik Tula. We're going to do that, boys. Let's go back. So now, when I left the Institute, the first thing I did was to take out and examine my main trophy, the letter on the cash in the state collection of viruses. As I feared, the cheap paper had grown damp and the ink had run, both on the envelope and on the letter itself. But the little I could decipher was very intriguing. I don't want to frighten you, but things are bad. Nestorov didn't come to the lab today. It looks like there was some secret being kept in this place. I need to go to Dula and speak with this Nadeshda Kulik. I hope she knows something and that she's still alive. If I'm lucky, I'll find whoever wrote this letter there too. We're going to Dula and there's a survivor base there. 
Oh boy. All right. Well, before we go to Dula, let's search the university for a bit. See what we can get. Gather up. And then we'll head up to Dula. All right. Let's see here. All right. We got some spices, some books. And we didn't get any of those. <laughs> All right. My luck. All right. Give me some of this. Oh, my radiation is so bad. You know what? Let's, uh... I'm not thirsty. Alright. Get that going. And one more. Chemistry set, give me that! No! Oh! Darn it! Alright. You know what? Let's go back to our safe haven, gather up, and uh, go back to bed. And then we'll continue on our quest. Alright, we are back at the safe haven. Let's just drop everything. Let's drink up. Let's uh, feed our pets. One more. There we go. And uh, let's go to bed. And on that, guys, thank you for coming along. If you love what I do, don't forget to subscribe. And so, I'll see you next time.